Hello everyone, Nancy here with A Joyful Cottage. I'm really excited about today's video. It's one that I've been wanting to do for a while. And so we're going to get started in just a moment. But before we do, I want to thank BurlapFabric.com for supplying the material for today's crafts. I'll leave links in the description box to the materials that we're using. And I think you're going to enjoy what I share with you today. They are spring related. I've got a new skirt that I'm making for my kitchen sink. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I like to have a skirt under my kitchen sink. And I think it makes it look more vintage and cottage, and I just really like that look. But I wanted a new one, so we're going to be making a new skirt today. And we're also going to make a ruffled burlap wreath, and that's gonna be a really fun project that I think that you'll enjoy. You might want to make a wreath of your own for spring or any time of the year. And, and then the final project is a thrift store makeover. And you know I love to do those. So I think you're going to have fun today with me. I hope you will. And without further ado, we're just going to get started. Oh, before we do get started, I just want to mention that when you see my left hand in the video, don't be alarmed. I do have a bruise on my hand. I probably got it during the bath renovation. I don't know. So yeah, my hands are taking a beating in the bath renovation, but that's okay. We're almost done. And next week I hope to share it with you. So, all right, now let's get started with today's crafts. After joining the two pieces together, I had a length of 89 and a half inches. So I cut this down after allowing for my hems on either side of the skirt. I cut this down to 69 inches total. Now I'm going to turn this over about a quarter of an inch and press it down. And then I will turn it over again about an inch and that will give me the hem I want on each end. in on each end and I prepare the top hem the same way turning it under about a quarter of an inch and then I'm using a one and a half inch seam at the top okay just a quick review of where we are so far I've joined the two pieces together 
So my seam is in the center. I've hemmed each end of the skirt and I've put in the pocket up at the top. All right, this is where the rod's gonna go. Now, to finish it off, I'm going to put in the hem at the bottom and I've already pressed this, so it's ready to go. And I'm using about a three inch hem. I had about six inches at the bottom. I wanted a nice wide hem. I think it will look nice on the skirt. And it'll also give some weight to the bottom of the skirt and help it to hang evenly. So I think that's gonna work out just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew that hem and we'll be done. For so long, I've wanted to change out my sink skirt to something more neutral, lighter, I, I love the look of linen sink skirts in French country homes and cottage homes, but I didn't want to pay the linen price. So this is a great alternative for me. It has the look of linen and it's very affordable. So thanks again to burlapfabric.com for sending this beautiful material my way. My next project is a ruffled burlap wreath and I'm using an 18 inch wreath form and two rolls of six inch natural burlap ribbon that's been surged. And I'm going to use a twist tie, or excuse me, a zip tie and wire cutters and a scissors. So the first thing I'm going to do is unroll these rolls. Now for this project, as we make this wreath, we're going to use the second and the third wires. Second and third wires. And I'm going to take my ribbon, which I've unrolled, and I'm going to kind of squish it together, and I'm going to attach it to this crossbar right here. I'm going to use a cable tie to secure it. So we're going to we're going to fold our ribbon in half and our wire is going to go right in the center of that ribbon. So we're going to pull it up. You want to make sure that your form is actually sitting on top of the ribbon. So you want your ribbon underneath the wreath form. All right. So starting with the second wire right here, we're going to pull this through. We're going to match it up so that it's even. And then we're just going to start pulling it through. So we're going to gather it with our left hand, pull it with our right. Making sure that the fold is even. We're just going to get this out of the way. And we're just going to keep pulling and gathering, and pulling, and gathering, pulling and gathering. And so you want it to be fairly tight on the bottom. You want to kind of adjust it. All right. And we're just creating a ruffle. And we're going to pull, pull it up tight, and gather it. Pull it up tight and gather it. And we'll just keep doing that. And you can make it as tight or as loose as you want. 
It's up to you how you want your ruffle to look. the first roll completely. I didn't bother to anchor it because I figured it wasn't going to come out. There's no way that it's going to, it's so tight in there. There's no way that's going to come out. So I just went ahead and continued on the same process, pulling up, gathering, it's good and tight. And then I'll just finish off the same process. Now, as you're doing the second row, again, we're doing the second and third wire. So now we're down to that third wire. And as we're pulling it through, you can really begin to see the ruffling effect. And it's tight, you know, it's tight in there. But if you just kind of stay patient, work it through, pull it up, pull it up. It, it, almost, it almost creates a ruffle all on its own. I mean, it's just the way that you're pulling it up. And I'm liking the way this is looking. So I'm just going to keep pulling that up. Kind of evening it out, evening out the top of the ribbon, or the edges of the ribbon, rather. And like I said, it is tight. You have to kind of use your finger to push it through. But I do like the way this is ruffling. I think it's going to be very pretty when it's all done. So I'm just going to keep doing that. Pushing it together. See how that's starting to look? It's really pretty. Pulling that ribbon, pulling the burlap, you see that? I mean, it takes a little doing. It's not what I would say is a really fast process, but it's not difficult. It's just... Now that we've got that first row on and we're trying to put on the second one, it's just a little more challenging because the space is really tight, but it's still quite doable. Again, just pushing. And I'm going to finish this off. I've got this much to do, and then I'll meet you on the other side.
finished pulling the ribbon through the frame, then I cut off the tail and just weave the ends of the tail around the wire and into the burlap. One thing I really like about this burlap ribbon is that it's surged, which means that it doesn't unravel as you're working with it. Like burlap often does, it, it unravels and it causes uh, dust. I want to embellish my wreath and I've got some tulips in a bouquet and I'm going to cut, cut this up so I have smaller pieces. Okay, now I've got some smaller pieces to work with. I'm going to attach these with floral wire so that if I ever want to change this out and put some other florals or decoration on it, I can. Okay. Now I need a bow. I've got some leftover burlap. I'm going to see what I can do with this. I don't want a big bow for this wreath, especially with these delicate tulips. So I'm just going to take some of the leftover burlap ribbon and make a small bow. And I'll attach that to the tulips and the wreath. final project I'm going to repurpose this frame that I bought at the thrift store. I don't really need the print, don't want the print, so I do like the frame. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to use this vintage postcard in the frame. 
So I think this will be really cute. I'm going to use the leftover fabric, the Osnaberg fabric from my skirt as a backdrop for the rabbit. So I think this is really going to be a fun project and fast, quick to do. And um, let's get started. I'm first going to take out the print. And I'm going to turn it around. And I'm going to cover the cardboard with the fabric. So I'm just going to make sure I've got plenty of it. this piece will work. I'm going to cut it so I have plenty of it. to be precise because it's going to get glued on. You'll never see it. All right. Let's see how that's going to look. I'm going to glue this on. Oops. I'm pulling it tight. See how my face had it? Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'm just going to trim away that excess fabric.
yeah, that looks good. I'll glue these sides. Okay. Let's see how this is going to look. I want to make sure I'm going to like it before I glue the rabbit onto this backing. But I think it's going to be fine. I think it's going to work well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and glue that rabbit on. Just going to kind of eyeball it. Looks pretty good. I think that's going to look cute. And there it is. Now, what about the frame? <clears throat> Should I leave it like it is? Or should I change the color of the frame? I decided to paint this Lyeth Blue, which is one of my favorite colors. I had some sample left over of this color, so I'm going to go ahead and paint the frame.
I applied one coat of paint, and after it dried, I gave the frame a coat of white wax. And I have no idea why this video is going at this speed. I guess I must have recorded it at a high speed. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, sorry about that. enjoyed today's video and perhaps you got some inspiration for spring decor in your own home. I want to thank again burlapfabric.com for providing the materials that I used today to make the crafts that I did. And I want to encourage you to go to their website because they have some great bargains over there. I noticed that the Osnaberg fabric I used for my skirt was actually on sale. So I would hop over and take a look. They've got more than just fabric. They've got all sorts of things. They've got wedding uh, materials that you can buy and purchase that are already made up. Just all kinds of things that are really neat. I, I'm very impressed with their website, and I will be going back to buy some things of my own very soon. I want to give a shout out to one of my viewers who I did sort of an exchange with, unplanned actually. But she had made a comment on the little French prints of the little ladies that I had that I bought at the thrift store and I showed you in the previous video. And she had made a comment to me that they would go so well in her bedroom and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with them. So I asked her if she would like to have them and she said she would. So I sent them to her and then she returned the favor and sent to me a very, very nice gift. Very nice. So this is a Moments in Prayer. It's a 52-week um, prayer journal. And I'm just really excited about it because I've been thinking about get, uh, getting a prayer journal. And now I don't have to because my friend took care of it. And also these um, 101 favorite Bible verses for women, which I think is pretty special. So I want to thank her. You know who you are. And um, yeah, it was really wonderful to um, make a new friend. Speaking of which, if you've been to my Facebook, A Joyful Cottage group page, I would encourage you to go over and follow there. We uh, have a lot of fun. There's a great group of women over there. We've only been doing this for about a week. And yet I can already see that we're going to be good friends and we're going to encourage each other. What I like about it is it's a place for you to share the projects and the things that you're working on and other bits and pieces of your life. And that helps me know who you are and what you enjoy. So we did a little poll this week and that was fun to see what people might be wanting to see in the future. And I got some really good feedback, so I'm excited about upcoming episodes and what I'm going to be sharing with you. And I do think that the renovation will be done sometime this week, hopefully, and I'll be able to show a reveal in my next video next week. So before I close, I want to share scripture as I always do. And I was thinking about spring and the renewal of spring and how everything that's dormant and dead comes back to life. and. You know, it's just, it's just a wonderful um, part of God's creation. And so I was thinking about that, and I thought about 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning in verse 16. So we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light, momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. And that is my hope, and I pray that it is your hope as well. It's not what's happening here. This is all transient. This is going to pass away. But our time with God is eternal. When we pass on to heaven and to live with him in glory. What a wonderful thing that will be and how encouraging that can be to us if we let it 
sink in and absorb it and live our lives in light of eternal glory, then everything that's happening here is just going to fade into the background. Sure, we're going to have issues and problems and trials and health problems and all sorts of things, but that that doesn't have to be our focus every day. We can focus on what we know to be true, and that is that God loves us, that he's preparing a place for us, and that one day we will share that place with him. And what a wonderful thought that is, and that's how I'm going to leave it today. So thank you so much for joining me. God bless you and keep you, and I'll see you again soon.